right, folks, we're back and we're going to do some more Lewis structures. We're going to predict shape, bond angle, and polarity. Hopefully you're to the point where you're getting sick of this and saying, Hummer, this is enough. I get it. Please stop. If you're to that point, you're exactly where I want you to be. That means you understand this stuff. You're getting bored with it. So we're able to move on and hopefully apply this. So uh, we ended the last video talking about the carbonate ion, CO3, two negative. And let's go ahead and figure out how many valence electrons we're going to be dealing with here. There's a carbon and there are three oxygens. And then we have this two negative charge here. You guys remember what that means? And that means we're going to add two electrons to our total. It means we've gained two valence electrons. We're going to add two to whatever our total is. So let's find our total and we'll add two and we'll see what we're allowed. So carbon, well, let's take a look. I think we've used it already on this uh, recently. Carbon is in group 14 with four valence. Oxygen is in group 16 with six valence. So four valence and six valence. So we have four plus 18. That gives us 22. But don't forget to add these two to our total because it's a two negative ion. We're allowed 24 valence electrons in our Lewis structure. So let's go ahead and try this. In fact, why don't, why don't we pause the video? Why don't you pause the video? And why don't you try finishing this up and see how you do. Then come back and check your work with my work. Okay, welcome back. Um, let's put carbon here in the center, obviously. Let's try, actually, let me just move it over just a little bit. Let's put carbon in the center. Let's try a double bond here and two single bonds. Let's see what we end up with. Uh, the carbon has a full octet now. This oxygen needs two more pairs, doesn't it, to complete its octet? And the other oxygens need three more pairs. So let's see how many electrons we've used. Let's count them up, okay? Uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Hey, that's perfect, almost as if I knew the answer before I gave it here. Oh, we're not quite finished. There's two more things we need to do here. Isn't this an ion? It is. So to show that, we need to put brackets around this guy and put the charge of the ion on the outside. So two negative. What else do we need to do here? Is this really one double bond and two single bonds? No, that second bond is shared in all three positions. So in reality, each of these bonds here is a bond in a third of another. So how do we illustrate that? That's right, we have to draw resonance structures. So to do that, let me open up this side of the bracket, and we're going to complete it again in just a minute. But let's draw an arrow pointing both ways and put the carbon in the center. This time, let's put the double bond over on the left-hand side, showing that it's shared over there as well. And then we'll draw a third resonance structure. This time, let's put it on the oxygen on the bottom, showing that it's shared over there as well. So we end up with this guy. Now we can put, close up our bracket and put two negative on the outside. So all three of these structures um, would represent the carbonate ion. That double bond is shared in all three places simultaneously. Now the shape. Looks like we have three regions of density. So here's our carbon in the middle, region up top, region over here, and a region over here. So we have three oxygens there, kiddos, don't we? Remember what we call that shape? It's trigonal, planar, and the bond angle. Let's do the bond angle first. That angle right there, or right there, or right there, they're equal to each other, aren't they? It's 120 degrees. So the bond angle, 120 degrees. Now, what about the polarity? Yeah, if you'd use the spaceship analogy, you'd say it's nonpolar. But since this is an ion, since it carries a negative charge, we said for this class we're going to call those guys all polar. Okay? If it were a molecule, it would be nonpolar. Because it's an ion, it carries a couple extra electrons there, we're going to call it a polar molecule, even though molecule is not the perfect term for this particular structure. All right, nitrogen gas is N2. Take a minute and draw the structure for N2. Then come back to the video and see how you did. Alrighty, let's see. 
Uh, there's two nitrogens, right? So nitrogen, there's two of them. Nitrogen has how many valence? Let's see, it's in group 15, so five valence for each nitrogen. Looks like we're allowed 10 valence. Did you guys ju jump right to the chase and do a triple bond between the nitrogen atoms? And then put a lone pair here and a lone pair there. Let's count them up, see if we've got our 10 that we're allowed. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yep, yeah, we're allowed 10. That's what we've used. So it looks like there's two atoms bonded to each other. The only shape for two atoms bonded to each other, of course, is linear. And they're the same atoms, so there's no difference in electronegativity. Therefore, there is no dipole. So this guy is nonpolar. All right. HCN. Take a minute and try doing HCN all by yourself, then come back to the video and see how you did. All right, welcome back. There's a hydrogen, there's a carbon, and there's a nitrogen. Hydrogen has one valence, carbon has four valence, nitrogen has five valence. Have you started to memorize valence electrons because we've done this so much? You don't have to look at the periodic table anymore. Good for you. So we have one plus four plus five. Looks like I'm allowed 10 valence electrons in my Lewis structure here. Put C in the middle, put a hydrogen over here, right? That can only have a single bond. Um, all right, I'll play the game with you. We'll put a single bond here to the nitrogen. That would mean this carbon would need two more pairs and this nitrogen would need three more pairs. I think I'm past 10 here, kiddos. Let's count them up, okay? Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Yeah, we're way past 10. So obviously, that single bonded nitrogen's not going to work. In fact, let's just erase it. It bothers me so much. Let's go ahead and try a triple bond. Okay, H to C. That has to be a single bond, kiddos. Then a triple bond to the N. Then the nitrogen needs one more pair. So you can see, folks, that the nitrogen has four pairs around it part of the time, and the carbon has four pairs around it part of the time. And the hydrogen's happy with, with just one pair. And so everybody has their octet, and so it's nice and stable. If you count up the valence, sure enough, I've used 10. Now, we have two regions of electron density. So we have the carbon here, a nitrogen there, and a hydrogen there. And there's nothing above or below. There are no non-bonding pairs. So that kiddos is called linear. And that angle is 180 degrees. Now for my spaceship analogy, I have a big strong dipole going that way because nitrogen has a pretty high electronegativity. And not as strong of a one um, going that way towards carbon. So this guy is polar. Those dipoles do not cancel each other out. So that is a polar molecule. Is that what you guys got? All right. Good work. Boy, look at all we've done. Hopefully you feel pretty comfortable with Lewis structures now and we can move forward. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.